I can, can perhaps now showcase the destruction, how it works, and yeah, as you mentioned, uh, get all technical about it, all the fun details. So, about, uh, about the building destruction, it's basically fairly simple on underlying, on underlying level. It is using uh, Verlet integration to simulate uh, to simulate uh, the destruction co the, that uh, collapse and everything and stability. That, that is a bit of a plot twist. So about the Verlet simulation, I think most of the people played at some point uh, Bridge Builder. I, I don't know if, if you played it, if, if you remember it. it it's uh, not uh, really, no. No, no? Okay, so it's a game where you are connecting sort of constraints, sort of pieces uh, into a bridge. And your goal is to make it stable enough. And that's a very typical typical game that is using the Verlet integration as a simulation. And how it looks like is something... Like do, 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 this, right? So it is simply a net of constraints that are connected, uh, connected to uh, through, through joints in uh, these spots. And when you uh, remove some constraints, uh, gravity is still applied on everything on every in every joint. So they are being pulled down and that, that generates stress. Here you can see those biter ones. Here is a, some mm -hmm. stress uh, generated. It's basically a deviation of spring. You can ima ima imagine those uh, constraints as very stiff springs, right? And if you uh, put weight of them or pull on them, there is, the stress is increasing. And after a certain point, they, they will simply break. And here you can see there is a lot of stress on these, and eventually it will. Oh, collapse. nice! Yeah, yeah. So this uh, integration is fairly efficient, mainly when you can limit uh, the scope, the amount on which you have to run it. Of course, so for example, this building is now completely passive this is not costing any performance basically at all for a simulation and also it's relatively easy to check which parts needs to be simulated so uh, this lets me simulate uh, even if the even if i would be destroying most of the city at the same time it still would run on a single core cpu Pretty, I uh, and I don't mean the single core uh, CPU like that when it was only single cores, right? That that would be yeah. mentioned. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, it isn't even multi-threaded. The, the simulation isn't multi-threaded, and I can destroy whole city basically in one go, and there wouldn't be any considerable performance issues. Yeah, and basically it uh, definitely looks good. Gets the job done. Yeah, oh, thanks. And uh, so, uh, however, as you, as you notice, the visualization has slightly more fidelity than these constraints, right? Like if I just yeah. cause a little bit of damage, I can see there is some there is some damage. Ah, without... could you remove the uh, you know kind of the yeah, showcase yeah, okay. constraints again? Yeah. So of yeah. course. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's all good. And this one is Here we go. a little bit. Oh, so there's uh, now a fire going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, that, that is cool. So here you can see the damage that's uh, basically more detailed than the constraints itself. Yeah. And uh, it works like this. Every, every horizontal constraint, I will, I will show you for one more moment yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. every horizontal constraint has a block attached to it and that block is attached at the center of the constraint and the center of the block is also at the center of a constraint so it's like you know this like that block look approximately like this and 
every block every block uh, has uh, um, sort of keeps the directional damage from left, right and top. Uh, it mm-hmm. probably could even uh, uh, keep from the below. Uh, however, uh, I was uh, when I was designing this, uh, I was trying to save as much performance everywhere as possible. And uh, that um, maybe you know it was sort of overzealous. However, um, at that point, the game ran on 12 years old CPU at over. 2000 frames per second so nice. that there was you know a lot of uh, lot of optimizations going on uh, and right now most of that frame budget like 80 80 maybe not 85 percent of frame budget right now goes to weather and uh, to volumetric rendering of clouds right however uh, <laughs> everything else is incredibly incredibly cheap on any new machines Without the clouds, this would run at thousands of FPS per second without any issues. So nice. I, I dare, dare to say that uh, destruction and simulation in general is relatively, relatively optimized. Uh, oh yeah, and it definitely looks good still, yeah. So uh, about, uh, so, so back to that destruction. So it just, uh, right now it keeps uh, the damage from three directions left top uh, right and you can see here visualized it it as a color green uh, green is from right uh, oh sorry uh, green is actually v- vertical uh, red is from left uh, and blue is from right and this is used to create dissolve gradient in shader so uh, visualization of uh, that subtile uh, destruction is done entirely on GPU in a way, right? Like CPU just uh, sends the amount of damage from given direction. However, that per pixel visualization is done on GPU. So again, that's uh, fairly efficient, fairly cheap. Mm-hmm. So if I do some more damage here, as you can see how that directional directional damage here is being uh, considered. Let me let me turn this off and let me fix this building. So, and here is the other thing about that uh, directional damage gradient. Since it is used to dissolve the building and to generate the damage, it is also easy to do this based on materials. So for example, things like windows, you could, you could see they basically get damage destroyed first. Mm-hmm. And uh, since GPU already has the data in form of texture to know what is uh, the glass, it can simply push that damage gradient um, as a stronger effect uh, for glass and things like that, which allows this visualization of simple glass being shattered first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see the people kind of running around there. Yeah, yeah. So that's the other thing about the building. The buildings, they have two layers. They have exterior and interior layer. And uh, they have also assigned rooms. And uh, when the zone is generated, and right, right now zone generation is pretty fast. Basically, if I want to generate new zone, that, that was it. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, it assigned the people to random rooms to make it look like you know slightly more uh, more lively. And uh, one other thing that I would like like to mention, maybe interesting to some someone, uh, yeah. buildings and uh, most of the things in the game uses uh, data oriented approach. 
which I believe is a reasonable, reasonable approach. Gim is using C sharp. Uh, however, uh, during uh, the, uh, when you are in the zone like this, uh, there is absolutely no memory uh, heap memory allocation. So there is no garbage collector pressure. And uh, if I won't mess up something, uh, game should run really smoothly without any hiccups and staggers and things like that. So, for example, those constraints in on that building that all lives in a single single array uh, of structures that are tightly packed uh, data. So it's uh, fairly efficient for CPU to deal with it. And uh, one uh, interesting thing maybe about that, because I'm sure that uh, some of the viewers uh, will be uh, familiar with uh, Verlet integration. And uh, there is this thing about it that it's not uh, generally very easy to make it stable. And thing with pixel art is that if something isn't, isn't stable, it's really easy to see any kind of uh, small positional or, or a rotation change. It can create noise, like basically it will kind of wiggle in place, right? And some pixels will, will suddenly disappear and things like that. And the trick uh, in this case to stabilize this valid integration is to send what I call stability signal. And how it works is that while Horizontal constraints can be easily swap removed and sorted uh, dynamically. Vertical ones are uh, are always sorted as uh, as the building was imported, and that was from ground up. And when the simulation runs, it first resolves the vertical constraints. And as long as there is connection from the one that is touching ground. I call this one Anchor, this, this joint is specifically called Anchor. And as, as long as this happens, as, the, as that signal can propagate up, it knows that building is stable and can completely switch the simulators, uh, can completely skip the simulation for that joint. So that makes it uh, fairly easy, easy to make it uh, Table without any any wiggle where it, where it shouldn't. Other variant would be to run many iterations. However, that would become uh, way more expensive for, for for updates for simulation. Would there be a big difference in the looks of it, or uh... Uh, big difference if it would be stabilized through iterations instead of this stability signal? of probably some i i don't think it would be it would be significant depends how many iterations per update you would be willing to run mm -hmm. so here is the thing about the interior layer the exterior layer is simulated using Quera. the interior layer is way simpler and right now it sometimes leaves things like this. And basically how it works is it simply checks the state of exterior and sort of collapses under it. But there should be like a bit of randoms that can stay above the level of, yeah, of exterior course. collapse. Yeah. But right now, sometimes it's visualized. It is a work in progress. It's so good. Yeah. 